ivory black, ultramarine blue. It's going to get darker down here. But it's still going to be a little bit lighter than, say, this portion here. So titanium white. And then ivory black, ultramarine blue. I'm gonna have a darker shape over here. Let's just make it warmer. So a lizard permanent right into that. And that's gonna give us the collar. So titanium white, ultramarine blue. And again, this is all what I see when I blur my eyes. Let's see here, a little bit of a light shape there. So traditionally you probably would have seen me put this stuff in last, but I'm putting this stuff in a little more early I would still consider this very early into this painting. Just because I want to have an idea of the entire picture. And I want to know how I'm going to crop it. So I think that's how I'm going to crop it. After that, it's really just going to be a matter of just fine tuning these shapes and then it'll be done. But that's going to be much in the future. You know, I, I, I don't know. Do I want to leave some of the light here? I'm kind of liking the way this looks just as an abstract shape. You know, I like to think about the way that I crop all of this stuff. So I think that's okay. I just need to push maybe a little more specificity into the collar. I don't know, maybe, maybe not. Uh, whatever, I think that's all right. Again, visual poetry, we're after visual poetry. All right, so this is gonna lead us to another post-it note. So uh, same person's comment, so Deborah Schulman. So again, now you're asking about the why uh, synthetic. So uh, I figure it's important I can now address the question. So these are the synthetics. They're fairly used up now at this point, you know, but they can still make a pretty decent mark. And uh, you're asking what the green brush is. So this brush here, if I can read it, let's, let's see if I can get the camera to focus on it. Come on camera, you can do it. I believe in you, there you go. This is a two round Princeton Summit 6100R, up. Oh, just got out of focus, but um, okay. So that's what that brush is. And then I have another post-it note over here. So again, now you're saying, yes, this is definitely a departure from my earlier style. So this I can talk about as I'm painting. So now that we are armed with the synthetic brushes, hold on, I got one more synthetic brush to get out here. Okay, so now that we have the synthetic brushes, I can talk a little bit about, you know, my departure. Um, from my earlier style, I wouldn't really call it a departure because I'm still going to, you know, do the umber sketch and I'm still going to do the classical approach to, to painting. Uh, it's just that lately it's, it's been my, it's been what I've been wanting to do. Like, um, we all have our, the things that we like to do. It's a crappy way to word it, but lately it's just more fun for me to work in this style. And I think that's a little more, it's a little more interactive. I think. And uh, I'll tell you another thing that uh, I've been feeling recently about painting. So again, I'm using the synthetics uh, now just because I can have a softer touch. Whereas the bristles would be kind of uh, a little bit too 
too heavy. The bristles are good for, uh, you know, putting down, slapping on lots of paint. But now I don't want to slap on lots of paint. Let's get our autofocus figured out here. Okay. I think we're back into manual autofocus. Okay. And that's just me trying to test the autofocus. Anyway, anyway. So um, what I'm trying to do here is not add that much paint anymore. What I'm trying to do is to herd the paint. So basically like uh, just moving it around and creating more specificity in that way. So I'm starting to put in the uh, eye socket and see how very quickly this is starting to emerge. So again, uh, pertaining to why I'm painting in this this style, and I think also you asked if I if I prefer painting in this style, and um, you know that that the answer to that question will change depending on what day of the week it is. To be honest. And I think it's just important to keep things fresh. And more importantly, just enjoy the way that you're working. And I think that this is a very, uh, I think this is a very expressive way to create a painting. And that pertains to another problem um, in painting. And so I think that another problem in painting is the, like I think I already talked about this, is the, uh, the fine line that we walk between literally describing what we see and visually interpreting it and creating, you know, visual poetry. I think in this way, you know, it keeps me from making a super realistic painting, but, th but at the same time, it allows me to make a painting that is, you know, it is realistic in nature, but it's not super realistic. It's more interpretive. And I'm just trying to carve away at these shapes. And um, right now I just want you to see all the mixtures that I'm making. And this is still with the same brush. But don't worry, I'll get you into close-up shot. I just want you to be able to see what I'm actually mixing to get uh, certain effects. Now this, I am seeing a little bit of this eye over here. Now the glasses, I can't ignore the glasses that much. Now I am um, trying to ignore the glasses a little bit, but eventually I will put the glasses in there. But right now I'm just trying to see, uh, you know, I'm trying to see the structures within. So I'm trying to build from the inside out. And there's an angle between the eyes that's somewhat like this. So I think we're at a good place in terms of the angle between the eyes. And when we get into close up, you'll see exactly how simplified all of these shapes are with much more clarity. But right now, I don't think it's quite that time yet. Right now, what I'm looking for is a uh, Still basic shape. And color. So I think that this needs to get darker and warmer. So again, Alizarin Crimson Permanent. And this is a Winsor and Newton's brand. Winsor and Newton's Alizarin Crimson Permanent has been kind of the star. I mistaken, mistakenly said the VIP, but it's the MVP. This is a very freeing way to work. So um, I think I'm thinking that the uh, the nose I need to describe a little bit more before I get into the synthetics. Uh, so again, like I said, the bristles the bristles are wonderful for shoveling paint around and. You know, I don't mean shoveling by like, you know, shoveling snow or anything. It's just, they're wonderful for carrying lots of paint. See that so much paint with very minimal 
brush marks. But once I have all the paint in there, then I just want to fine tune the shapes. And that's when I switch into synthetics. It's a darker shape that goes up here. And I have to be, I'm going to pay attention to that shadow shape as well. So let's see here. Now I can switch to a uh, synthetic. And just kind of shovel this or basically just kind of move that shape up. And there's a little bit of a secondary shadow in there and uh, whatever, let's just put it in there. It's cooler, so I'm gonna just basically take this right off the palette. Just have fun with it. Gonna have to switch now to another synthetic, however, just because I just put something cold on that brush. See how with the synthetic, I can just shovel or just mold the paint. So this is how we are in a way steering specific. So now with the mouth, I'm just going to look at the orbicularis oris, the structure, you know, main structure around here. I've heard it referred to as the T, T cylinder. Just basically a cylinder that contains a T. So that's like the, I just drew that in there, very simple, like a T and a cylinder. So cylinder, uh, by cylinder we mean the volume. So a cylinder would be like, you know, if I just flip this over, all of this is the cylinder and see the mouth and see here how these values are turning. See that, the turn, the gradual turn. That's what's going to happen if I can get the right brush. That's what's going to happen over here. So see how these values are starting to turn and get darker? And that's what we mean by cylinder. So if you've ever heard the muzzle of the mouth or the orbicular source or whatever, if you've heard of this referred to as a cylinder, now you know why. Because the values are turning just like that, the volume. Very much like a cylinder. But of course, there are other boundaries to that structure. So down here, it's a little bit of a half tone. Let's see here. Another one of my green brushes, and I'm just without any paint on it. See how with the synthetic, I can make a very light touch. So now we're definitely steering specific. Looking at each individual shape. And I'm analyzing each shape in terms of their structures. A little bit more of a lighter shape here. So now I think now it's going to be time to uh, to switch you into close up because now I think I'm going to be sticking with the uh, synthetics. So now we're just going to add more specificity. So we're going to steer specific now uh, with each one of these shapes. And I'm going to be visually um, abbreviating pretty much as often as possible. I'm trying to say as much as I can with the least amount of brush strokes as I can. And in that way, I want to optimize the, um, you know, every single brush mark, essentially. Now, I'm not really seeing that much you know, in terms of the uh, upper eyelid, but I am seeing a little glimpse there. 
And I think that I was showing a little bit too much, so I'm just trying to get much more of a specific shape there. Just ivory black, alizarin crimson permanent for now. So for the mouth, I'm going to use just a alizarin crimson permanent, ivory black, and um, you know some of the earlier flesh tones that we had. And I'm just going to start off with the uh, top middle portion of the mouth. Just like that. So I want to know the distance between here, so the root of the nose, and here, the top middle portion of the mouth. And uh, and then by doing that, I'm also getting the length of the um, the philtrum. So the philtrum is the teardrop looking shape that's usually over there. So again, the philtrum is right here. And the philtrum is a little bit more compressed here, I think. Now very easily, we're going to start to put in the lips. So... Um, a little quote from Sargent that you've probably heard me say plenty of times before. Sargent would say that the uh, the lips or a portrait is a painting with a little something wrong with the mouth. It's something like that. Pretty sure I just butchered it. But um, he does have a quote where he says something like that. And uh, to be honest, the mouth is actually one of the easiest things to move around. So the, that is the lips are super, super easy to move around. So if you've seen painters, if you've seen other painters uh, work in this way where you don't see them paint in the mouth or anything, or you don't see a glimpse of the lips for a long time, that's because they're not worried about having to move the lips because they know that the lips are just really, really easy to move around. Of course, not always the case. I mean, every painter is different. So a lizard and permanent. That's gonna be a little bit darker down here. Just trying to get the exacting nature of this shape. The exact nature of this shape. And you know, even though even the word exact is uh maybe not the right term. Um what I'm trying to do is relate. So see how there's the corner of the nose. Dark shape there. Over there. So um, yeah, like, like I said, there's a fine line between you know, visual poetry, abbreviating the information that you're looking at in some way, or you know, just not copying it. So there's a fine line between trying to get that exactly the way it is in the, uh, the photograph and trying to interpret it. And that's just something that comes with experience, the way you ultimately decide to abbreviate things. Well, that should, that's gonna be enough, I think, for uh, what I wanna say with the lips right now. I'm pretty sure that's going to have to move around a bit, so I'm not that worried about it right now. So uh, now the side of the nose, I'm gonna have to put in a little more alizarin permanent, alizarin crimson permanent. And see how now I really don't want a lot of paint anymore. Now what I want is to just uh, move the paint around. And again, oil paint is so flexible. Oil paint is so maneuverable. And I think I'm just now beginning to start to, to learn the, uh, I feel like I'm just now starting to learn paint handling. After how many years I've been painting? Almost 11 years. You learn something new every day. Every day you can be in the studio is a day you can learn and have fun. And remember, subtlety 
just means how close in value you can get certain shapes like this one and this one, yet maintain their differentiation. Subtlety is definitely what I'm trying to go after now within these larger shapes. And the fact that these brushes are still used up is going to prevent me from basically putting too much into each individual shape. Now I'm going to use the back side of the brush. Hopefully I can do this. With just that lighter flesh tone that you saw me use earlier. A little bit of the gray. Very simple. It's even a little bit of a light for here. And again, using the back side of the brush. And I think that that might be a bit too much, so at least for this shape. So now I'm just going to take some of the gray and some of the flesh tone right off the palette. Very simple there. and a little bit of a darker flesh tone. I think I'm gonna switch you back to the other angle just so you can see uh, you know, exactly what colors I'm getting. So uh, once in a while, I'll move you back and forth between the, um, you know, the close up and the regular shot. Just a few more touches here before I move into the other shot. All right, now what we're going to do is we're going to um, put in the glasses. So ivory black burnt umber, a little bit of alizarin permanent, the star of the show, and some Neo McGilp. And uh, let's see, right over here, I guess we'll start it end it over here. So just a few little points there so I know where I'm going to make these brush strokes. And over here. Okay. I'm just looking for the boundaries of the glasses. And over here. And I'm going to use more medium just because I want the paint to be a little thinner. And uh, you know when you want to paint wet on wet like what we're doing here, uh, the trick is that thinner paint will stick onto thicker paint. Who did I learn that from? I learned that by watching Bob Ross videos. All right, so now I think we can do this. And that's just so satisfying. <laughs> putting a large brush, excuse me, putting a large brush mark right across uh, for the glasses. See, what does the bottom of the glasses here go? I think, oh, you know, I think I need to put in that shadow again, that accent that I kept on losing before. Did I just use the wrong brush? Yes, I did. It's okay, I'll just have to clean the brushes off in a little bit. Yeah, I'm sorry. It's springtime here, and my allergies are definitely, uh, um, I'm grateful that I'm working inside the studio, let's just say that. Okay, so now I'm going to go ahead and put in the, uh, the bottom. Or the glasses. right into there. Being very mindful of each shape right now. Okay. 
Let's see, where does the other shape go? That highlight keeps bothering me. I don't know why. Gonna make it even more subtle now. Okay, so now there's gonna be a shape over here. There we go. And all into here. And now what we want is a very thin light mark. I don't even know if I have a brush that's thin enough for the lights, the highlights, but let's just use this one. So titanium white, I'm gonna push the lights kind of greenish. So I'm gonna use the um, cadmium green. A little bit more Neo McGilp. Okay, so now the lights. Okay, one there. And there. A highlight over here. Let's see here now. I'm gonna take some of the paint off with my paper towel. And now all into here. That's okay if we exaggerate some of the lights. Especially with the glasses, it's important to simplify. Gotta simplify. And that goes right above the nose there. Pretty simple, huh? I'm just kidding. It, it is a little bit difficult to um, to paint glasses like that with very simple brush strokes. But again, the, you know, the more you practice it, the more you will be able to to learn. So now, what I'm going to do is with the dark brush that I used to put that mark in, I'm just going to go ahead and just kind of edit these edges here. See how just in the photo reference you can tell it's supposed to be a little bit darker down here. And then the ear itself is going to turn in over there. So burnt umber, lizard and permanent. I'm gonna make that, I made that too red. So ultramarine blue, help to calm down the heat. Backside of the ear, all right. I'm gonna use the uh, fan brush if I can find it here. The fan brush to eliminate some of the glare. Now, there's gonna be a little bit of a cast shadow here uh, for the glasses, so let's make it cooler. Burnt Umber, Ultramarine Blue into the middle tone region of the palette. Gonna take some of the uh, paint off using the paper towel. All right, so let's put in this shape. And that is for the cast shadow from the glasses. Remember, cast shadow is a projected shadow, so that shadow is being projected from the bottom of the glasses, and the shape needs to get darker. Now, because the last couple paintings I made uh, in this style, um, in particular this filming style, so the, uh, you know, showing you every single brush stroke, because the last ones uh, were a little less realistic and that was the style that I wanted. I wanted a little bit more like uh, visual poetry and emphasizing each brush stroke. Um, so now I'm gonna try to elaborate on that a little bit more with this painting. So um, let's see, I think I'm gonna try to push it a little bit more realistic for you. In particular, with the last one, 
that I did, the one of Catherine, um, that one wasn't very realistic and uh, that wasn't the look that I was going after. So um, I think with this one, I'm going to push the realism a little more. So we're gonna push the darks right into here. So that being said, I think that this will probably take a little bit longer than the other two or three, however many I've done now in this style. Uh, excuse me. Um, so now what I'm gonna do is uh, with each shape, so right around here with the eye, see the autofocus, sorry. 